It's Oscar nomination day today. This morning, the break of dawn, the nominees for the 92nd Annual Academy Awards were revealed. It was a big day for 1917, the year, not the movie. Though the movie, too, but... <laughs> 19 of the 20 acting nominees are white people. No women were nominated for best director. That's fewer minorities than in Donald Trump's cabinet, so, you know. <laughs> the movie Cats got shut out, so no cats were even nominated. All, actually, Universal, the studio that made Cats, pulled the movie from Oscar contention, which is always funny, because they probably didn't need to do that. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's like Mike Pence pulling out of contention for a Soul Train award. It's unnecessary. <laughs> Double congratulations to Scarlett Johansson, who got her first and second ever nominations today for yeah! Marriage Story and Jojo Rabbit. Uh, best Supporting Actress, Best Actress. Renee Zellweger was also nominated for Best Actress for her role as Judy Garland in the biopic Judy, which, as far as I know, does not exist. <laughs> no one I know has, uh, has seen that movie. And maybe the most surprising Best Picture nominee was Ford versus Ferrari. This is a movie that was apparently so good, even Matt Damon couldn't ruin it. It's, it's like running a, running a marathon with a medicine ball strapped to your ass. The big winner today, uh, with 11 nominations, was the comic book movie Joker. It's been a big year for mentally ill clowns already. And with that said, <laughs> the White House yesterday tweeted their... This is their late entry for Best Picture. They wrote, uh, first snow of the year. And you see it's a photo, beautiful photo of snow falling on the White House, which is fine, except there was no snow in Washington last night or yesterday. <laughs> and in fact, it was 70 degrees, according to the National Weather Service. Even their weather is a lie. <laughs> Impeachment will be falling on, on D.C. this week. The Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, said she's ready to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will then take time to digest them through all five of his stomach chambers. And <laughs> even with, the, with damning new evidence coming in all the time on this, Republicans continue to claim uh, they don't see anything wrong with the way Trump handled Ukraine. In the same way R. Kelly didn't see anything wrong with a little bump and grind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The president took a field trip tonight to New Orleans for the college football championship game. This is the third college football game Trump has been to this season, which is three more games than he ever watched Eric or Don Jr. play. But <laughs> the Clemson Tigers played the LSU Tigers at the Super Bowl. The Tigers won, uh, as I predicted they would. So Trump was at the game tonight. He's been trying to get out in front of friendly crowds lately. And on Thursday, he held a pep-himself-up rally in Toledo, during which he again made the preposterous claim that people think he's better than Abraham Lincoln. They put me in a contest with the late, great Abraham Lincoln, right? So who do you like better, Trump or Abraham Lincoln? I said, Abraham Lincoln. And they say they did a poll on this. I think I remember the numbers. All I know is we won against Abraham Honest Abe. We won. 53 to 47. You believe that? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, I don't believe it. I, maybe it happened, but I still don't believe it. But go on. I went back to the first lady. I said, first lady, I just beat Abraham Lincoln in a park. <laughs> he calls the first lady first lady? First lady. First lady, come give President Daddy a kiss right on the lips. Trump also, a week after almost running us into a war, loudly complained that he didn't win the Nobel Prize for Peace. I mean, I'm going to tell you about the Nobel Peace Prize. I'll tell you about that. I made a deal. I saved a country. And I just heard that the head of that country is now getting the Nobel Peace Prize for saving the country. Well, maybe... Maybe we should blow them up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so far this week, he's taken credit for saving Ethiopia and curing cancer. He also landed that plane on the Hudson. You remember, the media said it was <laughs> Sully Sullenberger, but I know for a fact it was Trump all the way. Meanwhile, the vice president, you know when your grandpa comes to visit, you give him a project to keep him occupied so he doesn't get in any trouble? Well, for Mike Pence, that project involves rocket ships. President Trump launched the first new branch of our armed forces in 70 years. The United States Space Force has arrived. <laughs> and then they put him in a box full of packing peanuts and shipped him home. <laughs> 
You know, in England, there's, they're going crazy in England right now because Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have decided to drop out of the royal family. So there was an emergency meeting of the Majesties today to discuss this. The Queen held the meeting with the whole family at one of her country estates. I would have loved to have been a fly on the cucumber sandwiches for that one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is causing a lot of consternation in the UK. The Queen is said to be disappointed and hurt by the decision, which is, I just don't understand. Let me get this straight. The royal family's upset that Harry and Meghan want to move out and become financially independent. Isn't that every parent's dream? <laughs> to not have their 35-year-old kids still living with them? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season. Buy my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and drew it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. And if you don't support that, you are a monster.